recording in progress. Dave, you, you almost got that like perfectly. I'm going to have to, li oh, I'm not going to be able to listen back to it. I think you were slightly, you were slightly early by like a microsecond. But apart okay. from that, that was beautifully synced with the um, Zoom robot. And you know we do this just for you, Sophie, because we. Really I love it like know. every we week. We never know; it's only for you because it doesn't come yeah. off on my recordings. Sorry, I mean, maybe I made it up. No, you. I've because I put those things on YouTube. I did remember. Not that bustling. <laughs> but that happened, Dave. You're gonna ruin the lot of this. No, everything's fine. That's right. Um, look at this canvas. Yes. <laughs> yeah, look at <laughs> look at the canvas in the marital cloak. <laughs> I'm going to start um, just like putting images on you for this particular one because I can just, it's like a great pro projection yeah. screen. And look, we're just so very grey in our lockdown grey attire. Are you wearing grey as well? I am wearing grey. It's like a dark, it's like a, it's a dark mottled grey, but it's still grey. Like it's not black yet. Guys and our, our shades of grey. I hear that's a great movie. No. no. That's a horror, but in a completely different way. <laughs> a horror show. Thing. So this week, this week was another, um, this was a you choice, right? Yeah. This was a me, like, I say, I feel like you guys to take responsibility for this one. Okay, like, I will take responsibility because there was, and I stress at one stage when we established that on the lists of movies that were growing, there were very few foreign and old horror, and I have seen a lot of old horror, and yep. this is one, but what, and again, so this is, the reason I know this movie is because for Christmas or my birthday one year, Seb gave me the VHS of it. And I have a feeling it was like, you know, at the video shop when you like used to go there and they'd have like the bargain bin out the front. And I presume it was like a $3 uh, VHS. So he got me that. So obviously like I watched it and then I remembered it. And, um, but I think what we, so this is not only is this old horror, this is like old C grade horror. So I think this is like the difference when we think, of, we think about like the birds and I know like, so previous to us recording these, we watched Village of the Dam, the 1960s one, which is like my favorite movie ever. And yeah, that is like yeah. a good quality old horror. Whereas this is, it's old horror, which like brings it into like a completely different category anyway, because the way that we dealt with horror themes used to be very different, but it's also trash. So it's like old and crap and like, very offensive, like extremely offensive in a way that I did not remember. And if I did remember that, might not have suggested that we uh, watch this movie because it's just, I get that back in the day, maybe the way that yeah. we dealt with certain cultural issues were different, but this is almost like... It's pretty bad. I mean, yeah, bad. as you say, with the caveat that in 70 years time, people will probably roundly criticize us for things that we say and do. Sure. Um, there was quite a lot of brown face in the movie, or given the age of the film, gray face. Gray face, and like a, um, a darker should, gray. Than should we what? start by saying what we watched? <laughs> I guess <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So we watched the four <laughs> we skulls. We didn't say that yet. Um, we didn't say that. We watched the four skulls of Jonathan Drake. Yes. And yes, it was a Sophie choice, and it was a 1959 American film. Yes. And I had never heard of it. So I do enjoy, Sophie, that you bring some new new things to my life. Yes, my nightmares. I bring, I bring nightmares to this particular. Um, but the, these are, yeah, they're not scary nightmares. They're just disturbing nightmares. I think. So some of the things that um, got me intrigued to start with before we, we go into the film were the fact that, you know, I love a short film. This, you know, was even below my, my hour and a, a half concentration span. Which it's the you shortest would think, film which you would think would mean I had a lot of attention for this film, but sadly not. But yeah, no, this I think is one of the shortest films we've watched, because what was it? It was only like it was an hour and 70 ten. minutes. Yeah, yeah, an hour and 10 minutes. So that, first of all, great. And um, the other thing was, because it's so old, like we just were able to find it easily on YouTube. Like it wasn't even on one of our streaming services. But no, we, in we fact, I it. don't think it would be on any. Because as I said, I trialed Shudder, which was the horror movie streaming service a while ago. And I think this is even too, like, obscure and old and bad for, like, those kinds of things. Also, for, like, a for-profit entity to put something that is quite this offensive up. In, a, in an age when Disney are taking things down or flagging yeah. the racial content of some of their older films, for, the, for a, a company to go out of their way to host this movie... I think is maybe too much to hope for. I th yeah, well, I hope for is the wrong is the wrong thing to yeah. say. It to needs like a trigger warning, I think, almost. Yeah. Um, and by almost, I mean a hundred percent. So we tried watching it a couple of nights ago, um, 
And yeah, I was I was quite excited when it was starting because I quite enjoyed like the opening sequence. I quite like, you know, with the old films where it goes on for ages where you get all yeah, like, the like the, the like the end credits are actually at the, at the beginning. beginning. Yeah. And, like the end is like not really a yeah. And it was all happening while there was like a skull in the foreground. So like it was creepy and yeah, that very like organy kitschy yeah. music. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's one thing I have to say for this film. I did really enjoy the music throughout it. I'll give it that. Good about Hammond. Nice about Hammond organ mm -hmm. going on. I like the music. Scary Hammond organ. Um, that may be one of the only things I liked about the film. But I did. I liked the opening credits, and I liked the music. Um, and then and I hated um, everything else. About, well, uh, as I've already said to both of you, like I have to caveat this with I'm going to be completely useless to both of you, um, to anyone um, interested in this, because I actually fell asleep when I tried to watch it the first time. Um, yeah, we, we can argue that I was really tired, but actually I think I just lost interest. Um, but I, I just finished watching it just there. But like, I mean, I'm crap at telling you the premise of films anyway, but I'm going to be even worse today because I don't really know what happened beyond it being quite offensive, but I quite like the music. Uh, well, it's just, uh, it's you and me, Dave, then. And yeah, yeah, I'm just, I'm going to take a back seat and just enjoy. So I've been skulking in my clothes. I can start. I reckon I can remember the very beginning. And then yeah, it's, so. As you, uh, so it's like, it starts off yeah. where we are at, we're at the house of Jonathan Drake. The eponymous he, Jonathan Drake. Exactly. And he's sitting in a chair and I think he, like, and he's staring at a That's shrunken a, yeah. head. So he's got a shrunken head. So a shrunken head, is, if you haven't seen one before, Especially in 1959, it's exactly what you'd think. So it's a head that's all shriveled down and it's got a little like sewed up mouth and it's got like a ponytail. Um, and it's just a bit, it's just a bit gross. And so he's looking at the, the But I have to say that was one point, point that caught my interest because, um, God, what's the film? Beetlejuice? Yeah, so that was like, like yeah. yeah, so it made yeah. me want to, it made, maybe want to rewatch Beetlejuice because oh, there was a I watched that like at least several times a year, but like if we wanted to make that a movie, I'd yeah. watch it again. Oh, anyway. So anyway, that was that was my joy of the shrunken head. But back to something he's like, this and film. then he's like, is he? He's like dreaming or something. Anyway, then he's like, he has a he has what bald. I would describe as a, a wee connection. Yeah, he has a yeah. little moment where he kind he of he does this. Like... He does this. <laughs> I like how you made your entire camera vibrate with that. So he does that, and then we what we see is what I think is maybe one of the first instances. It's funny. It's like one of the first instances of like animation, but it's like again. Like Village of the Damned was made a year after, and like the bits where the kids' eyes glow, so much better than these skulls that are just kind of like I'm a skull floating around. So yeah. he freaks out. So he's had, so he's looking at his thing. He has this little conniption. There are skulls, um, and then, oh, and then the daughter. And then his, and his daughter, daughter his daughter's in. like, Dad, what's up? And he won't tell her. And he's like, she's like, Oh, you never tell me what's wrong. Yeah. Um. So it's clearly something that's happened before. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, and then it's um, and that's right. And she's come in with the news that his brother um, has called about, and I don't know what word they're saying for the. Yeah, I'm trying to think. It's like lances or something or lances. Like, it sounded like like Shavaro. 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 Okay. It sounds Javaro. like so there was like a club in Adelaide called like Javagos, and that's what I heard every time they said Shavaro. Anyway, um, and so the, and so that's like the shrunk. Anyway, so he. This brother is called saying something about that. And like, my favorite one, not my favorite, but like, I think the first thing that stood out to me was, he was like, well, he wouldn't have said it like that. How did he say it? Because obviously like, this is this very scary. Like, why did he ring up talking about this thing that this, anyway, and, um, and that turns out to be the shrunken head. And then we cut to the brother who just like dies really quickly. Did I miss it? Yeah, so yeah, he, so sees, he sees a shrunken head in his window. Yes. But that's before right. that, we do have the bit where so Jonathan Drake's like, I have to go and see my brother immediately. Like I'm worried yeah. something perhaps something bad's going to happen because he. But it's going to take me there. two days to get there. Yes. Oh yeah, he is. says it's really weird because he says, "Oh, there's no way to get there by plane, and it's a two-day train journey." So you expect him to be going somewhere in the middle of nowhere, and he gets to this like stately house, which is clearly near enough for the police to arrive when they arrive later. So it's like. Maybe it's the county weird. or something. Maybe. Yeah, Maybe. so that's right. Yeah, so he's like, I've got to go see my brother immediately. He like, and then it cuts to the brother. And that's right. And like the butler's come in being like, I've just talked to your brother. Like he's coming to visit. And then the butler leaves. And I really like, enjoy the butler in this. So I'm going to just interject with bits that. Yeah, I'm no, go for it. Okay. Head, but sure. the butler's, um, 
<laughs> the butler's just like oblivious to everything throughout this film, which just I really butlering. Like, just, he's just butlering. He's just being yeah. your like bumbly butler who's doing his butlering, and that's all that matters. And so he's missing all of the important stuff constantly throughout this film. So yeah, yeah. So yeah. So he's um yeah. Brother's coming. He leaves, and then this what is like what is his name? Anyway, the guy who dies first. He then yeah. He turns around and he sees oh, a front Steve, head Steve that looks basically yeah. Like almost identical to this, the. Oh no, it's book. Kenneth. That's the name. It's Kenneth. Kenneth. Sorry, I've got okay. the Wikipedia open. So, so Kenneth, Kenneth. Yeah, Kenneth. Kenneth sees a shrunken head hanging outside his window that looks basically identical to the shrunken head that like Jonathan was just like staring at in his room with like loving affection, and then um and then the butler leaves. You know, butler's left. He sees the thing, and then <laughs> the first. No, maybe not the first, maybe the shrunken head's the first incredibly offensive thing. The second incredibly offensive thing happens, and that is a white man in brown face and body who comes in and he's got his ponytail and he's got his sewed up mouth. And um, he comes and he like, there's kind of, they've got these kind of like the wooden-y, like almost like stiletto thing with like poison that comes up a bunch of times. He like jabs him in the neck and um, he falls down and he just about start. he wants to cut his head off we find out why later but it seems to be related to the shrunken head maybe and then the butler comes back in yeah so this guy scampers and then the butler sees kenneth on the ground and kenneth is dead yeah so that's the yeah i'm okay so far yeah, I I'm, with, I'm with you so far i remember that because that was yeah. like the first like five minutes so and then and, sure. right, and then we cut to cop oh. scene yeah the cop yeah. turns up so this is like so crap film so like there's this one shot that happens repeatedly in the film when the cars arrive. And it's like this panning shot from on a crane where the car pulls up. And yeah. it's like, it's exactly the same every time. And it's not the same shot every time a car arrives, but it's like the same movement of the camera. So like, I'm pretty sure when they were doing these shots, they just like had the cars lined up around yeah, the Yeah, I just went like one, and just did two, one, three. three. Yeah, 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 just like that. So the policeman turns up. Please. And this is when you first of all got upset because you didn't understand why the body was taken away before the policeman turned up. I remember the day was like, ah, why is this? Oh, no, the yeah. body's taken to the morgue. And the oh yeah, because like, yeah, you, you just see the car leaving and then the, the cop comes. Yeah, and so they've just taken like the body away. But yeah, that's the quite cop, like, there's no cop there yet. It's quite that's... like saying because they don't think it's a suspicious death. Yeah. It was well, just the doctor's heart like field. the doctor's like, ah, it's probably fine. It's probably, probably just probably yeah, so because, yeah we walk in so basically like yeah this this cop comes and he is like a real like he's like the equivalent yeah. of the 59 fast talking cop so it's he's one of the better there. things about the film i would say yeah and so he yeah. talks to the butler and the butler's just like oh like the the actual like this guy's family physician is still here yeah like do you want to come fucking talk to him and the cop's like yes and so they go in and then you've got like yeah the family physician there who's just got like the the death certificate in his pocket and then just like another strange man called like dr zurich or Zurich. Yes. Zurich. zurich. yeah it's, not, from it's, not good. it's a he's from yeah. so obviously his name is he's, zurich what is described again I, like the, the wikipedia page calls him a sinister archaeologist Dr. Emil Zurich. And he's actually quite good. Like, he's got a good face yeah, he's, and a he's good voice. Sinister. Yeah. And, yeah. And he's pals with Kenneth, which is... And he's, yeah. Okay. So the whole idea was... The, the 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 butler the butler called or is it the doctor who called Doctor Zurich? Because basically the like the weird thing was it's like they come in the guy's on the ground he's dead and then the, they do note like there's a shrunken head and they're like hey who knows about the shrunken head it's Doctor Zurich so like they get yeah. him in the physician comes in goes like oh here's the thing he dies of natural causes because there's this weird thing that happens to all the men in this family where they kind of yeah. hit around sixty and they die of like a natural death that's related to their and heart. That just and then that sounds just, like I, I felt like that sounds like growing up in the west of scotland men in their well, 60s so dying of a heart attack like, yeah. he got even, like he doubles down on it twice because he's like yeah. oh yeah he dies of that he probably died of natural causes and he's like oh so there's no point in doing an autopsy and he's like nah nah it would just be a waste of time it just happened it just happens and, and money i mean who's gonna pay for the art it would just be a waste of money you know really yeah clearly no one has like any money in these big stately houses who would no, be paying i know exactly like, well, like, what the fuck so that was bizarre yeah, and so they so they established that, and then uh, oh yeah, the other thing. Sorry, I, I just I, I'm going to interject as well with Wikipedia. No, do because you've got it, Wikipedia, like, which means if we, so, we're going to be missing <laughs> stuff like pretty soon. I think. Um, so, <laughs> Zurich apparently not saddened by Kenneth's sudden demise, even yeah, though they're apparently pals, proudly calls the shrunken head 
a particularly fine specimen. Yeah, he does so say Zurich that. Zurich is very, very Because he's got it next to him. He's sitting in his chair. He's sitting in the chair like a ghost mummy. So he's there and it's kind of like it cuts to him and you think, is that just like a dead wax man in a chair? But then the dead wax man starts talking. It's Dr. Zurich. And he's, yeah, he's just got his little, the shrunken head that was hanging up is now just next to him. And he's just like, but he's got gloves on. I don't know if you noted that, but he did have gloves on. He did have was, gloves on. Yeah. And he was just like, this is the shrunken head. Um, Look how fine it is. Also, what I'm really enjoying about this, again, because I didn't pay attention to any of the names when it was on, apart from obviously Jonathan Drake, but it's just how very English the names are. So we've got Jonathan, we've got Kenneth, we've got mm-hmm. Jeff, oh, yeah. um, who else? Well, someone else. But yeah, but then it's like, but the bad, baddie, um, spoilers, um, email, email Zurich. So yeah, it's real foreign. Um, yeah, definitely. It's just like, you know, in The Lion King, how all the good characters have American accents and all the, the bad and like side characters are British. Yeah. It's yeah. like this, but yeah. And, and so Star then, yeah. um, and then what have we, you know. So that's when it. Jonathan turns up. Yeah, because he, he turns up his, at like the funeral. So it's like, because, you know, he's been traveling for two days. He doesn't know that his brother's dead. He rocks up, knocks on the door, gets greeted by Jeeves, because I don't know what Jeeves' actual name is. No. Jeeves probably something. Something. It's probably Edwin or like Robinson. Or like Harley. Well, I forgot the other bit. There's a George as well, but that was the doctor. But I don't know who the yeah. The doctor. All right, we'll call like him the first doctor ever. Yeah, we'll Jeeves. And yeah, so he, yeah, he greets him and is just like, "Oh, here's the thing about your brother. Come with me," and just like leads him into like the funeral. Yeah. Just like yeah. the funeral with a casket. Like, what, what is oh, it? It's like, it's what we've missed, what we've missed even before that is that we have the, um, oh. he comes and takes his head. Yeah. The, um, so the, um, I don't know That's what American. to call him. Let's call him, the, yeah, the, the, the. They're calling him a tribal witch doctor. So the witch doctor comes back and cuts off his head. But after, yes, yeah, right. So before um, Jonathan comes, there is a scene where uh, the body comes back. And Jeeves is like, take the coffin into like the living room or wherever. That's where the thing's going to be, like the um, the service. So they do that. And you see like the witch doctor like sneaking around. And then he goes in and he opens up the casket and he cuts off his head and he takes it away. And so when Jonathan arrives, because obviously he knows that there's shit going down that no one else is like knows about. He's just like, open the casket. And then it's like, no, nah, we thought we wouldn't. He's like, open that damn casket. And they open it up and he doesn't have a head. And everyone's like, fuck. Well, ever actually, everyone is like fuck. That's about how upset they are. About yeah, it. I remember they're just like everyone's fuck, kind of like, and the butler's kind of like, oh yeah, he does the thing. Where, I was like, isn't that though? I thought that was like the family doctor when. So when the guy opens, you know, and Jonathan opens up the casket, and he's all like, he's a bit more shocked because his brother doesn't have a head, but even though he knows he's not going to have a head, and then he just like very like in a very placating way goes. It's like kind of like they're there it's they're fine there. it's fine like it's this very like unfeeling missing a of... head he's not gone all together <laughs> yeah, it's fine and then we <laughs> yeah, his body is still here come, what are on, you come do on buddy and then do we do then we cut to yeah, we find out we, who's... To, we then go to zurich we still, yeah. well, then we go and then we find out that the witch doctor has taken the head to zurich and it's zurich who is turning the heads into That's shrunken right. heads. Because we cut to we cut to a pot of boiling water and Zurich kind of looking at the pot of boiling water. And you're just like, what is he making? Off. Stew? Yeah, and it's like, why are you doing this? And he kind of has a look at the flame and he kind of looks in the pot and then he goes over and gets the head. Mm. And uh, says some evil dialogue, says some evil things to Zutai, and then Zutai. puts the puts the head into the into the boiling pot because apparently yeah. that's and, essential for the. Pot. And then does does it, that stage that he says like basically once I got Jonathan Drake's like the curse will be done is it at that yeah, stage? Something, yeah, it's somewhere in there. Yeah. And again, going to my my great trusty reference of Wikipedia. Um, so the head's brought and Zurich calls it um payment for the evils of your ancestors and begins the process of shrinking it. Yeah, so uh, yeah, you're right. It's like once he has Jonathan's head, yes. the curse will be finished. Yeah, and so what he basically does is he just like at, at some state he like takes the skull part out, and then you put the head in the pot, and it shrinks. I think is like if everyone's going to shrink a head at home, from my understanding, that's they're your main steps. Take yeah. the well, bony mass that's not going to shrink. Take that out. And well, it's, again, it just, I, he it does it out. so lackadaisically. Like he yeah. boils the head, and then it goes off screen. And then he just like puts this perfect 
clean skull on the table. Yeah. yeah. Like, so, there so, would be, like, muscle I know. and so, eyes so, and all kinds of stuff. Sophie, you're really stuff. missing out not watching these horror films with Dave, because the things that really upset him, so, of course, earlier on, it was because the body was removed before the police. That really pissed him off. But then this beautifully immaculate skull being brought out, Dave was like... <sighs> No, I haven't. So it's like it's as I say, I was still awake at this point just because Dave was getting so stickler for procedure it's like and this is, for anatomical well, integrity. What we could do is if we, if if at any stage in the future a film that we watch is on Netflix, like can't you do the watch parties? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, watch, yeah. But then do I, like does that mean we just watch at the same time or is there some way that we interact? I don't know. I've not invested. Oh, no. That's I'm a, that's a, a, like look. I digress. We can work that out at a later time. So. We've now discovered it's Dr. Zurich, and he's doing it because the um, the ancestors of these Drake men did something real bad, and yeah. like this is so the you way. Feel like he's like a supportive ally of of this. Um, the indigenous witch, witch doctor. You, you think yeah. he's like, do you know yeah. what? The white dudes are crap. The Drakes have been crap. I'm oh, gonna yeah. I'm gonna help help you out because this is all bullshit. And here, look at my shrinking head techniques. So yeah. Yeah. So, um, and then, okay, is it from then? So at one stage we were in the family vault. Yes. Yeah, so at so point, and must then there, there are there are two skulls and there are three. Yeah. So is yeah. this when his daughter turns up? Yes. So he, he wants to, so his daughter is like worried about his dad, her dad rather, Jonathan, and is like, you're not telling me stuff. And yeah. also you're just working so hard. You're yeah. working so hard. At as you, at the university, it's always you're working so hard at research at the university, mm -hmm. and we later learn he's 27 years at in the Department of Occult Sciences, which is not a thing. <laughs> Are you sure there's not a single university? Did you look it up, Dave? Is a bet, well, a bet a university in the world? Because I want to know this. Maybe look, if I were to bet money on it, I'd say you're right, but let's just double check that for all of our... Sciences and Parapsychology. Oh, where's that? Oh, that's just in the New York Public Library. Okay, okay well, that's not really it's a not, university. A department. I mean, I bet there is, I but there is. irrespective of whether there is a department called it, that, a cult it's not science is not a thing. It's not a thing. But it's well, he's been working very hard on it for 27 years. So, you know, like. Is it like that some universities have a department of chiropractic in the Faculty of Science? Yes. Zing. Or, or aromatherapy. <laughs> um, anyway, so we're in the vault. Yeah, so sorry, we're not in the vault. Yeah, so the, the daughter's come, she's worried. Um, and there's a, that he's like, I need to tell you about yeah. our family history. Yeah. Like, and something that afflicts the male ears specifically. Yeah. So you're fine, but let me tell you why I'm so stressed and your dear old uncle is dead. So then we go to the vault and there's the story about the- yep. So it's like, there's, there's, my great, there's my granddad, no head. There's my dad, no head. And um, here's my brother, um, no head. And also here's in the cupboard, which it, this key opens, there are two skulls. That's your that's your very granddad's head, and that's your granddad's head. But we never put their heads there, and so somehow someone is able someone is just to putting put head the skulls back. Yeah. It's like so. they die, they get their heads stolen, and then the skulls appear later on for some reason. And it turns out that do we get the story then that it's the great grand great great grandfather? Yeah, I think Wilhelm. So. What's his name? I can't remember. Wilhelm. Oh, is Wilfred. it that? Drake. Wilfred. Wilfred Drake. Wilfred. It's, look, I was close. So, and he. Wilfred was, massacred was, the Javaro men and boys. Yeah, so it was because there was like a Swiss expeditioner who went out to look for stuff, and then he got captured. And so, like Wilfred goes out with some people, and when they get he they get there, they realize that these uh, people have beheaded the Swiss ex expeditioner and as a like punishment he just massacres them all yeah but the one person who gets away is the witch doctor who then puts a curse on like the Drake family and like the male heirs I think yes that's my understanding yeah. yes yes um yeah yes so that's what we've learned Good we've job. learned, Good we've, job, we've, we've, learned <laughs> we've learned the central driving force of the of the whole thing yeah you know, and so, and then we've also then established that, okay, that like now Jonathan's next. And then, so yeah, and then we leave because we see the two, I remember there were two skulls, we leave, something yeah, else happens, yeah. and then the cop is back. Oh, yeah, so that's, that's, a, that's a bit later on, I think. So, okay. So, this, so Jonathan Drake's in bed, 
Um, and then he says something really weird. It, it, um, the butler comes in and said, would you like some warm milk to help you sleep? Mm. And Jonathan Drake says, yes, if you like. He's like yeah. Well, no, it's not. Like, no, it's, it's if you like. He's not going to make like milk for you. him for you to drink. That doesn't make any sense. You, this is not how it works. He's not. Again, okay. again, Sophie, the things that upset <laughs> Dave in horror films. Although, I, I do remember I, I remember that one as well being like, that's a strange way to say yes, please. Like, yeah. I don't really know. He doesn't even say please. Yes, if no. you like. Like, come on. Man. If you like. And that's the thing. No wonder the butler's not paying attention to anyone. No. Else. He's like, you're, you're just me. Think of these people's attitudes and their rules. I am going to go and have this warm milk by myself. I can take myself to yeah. bed. So yeah. at this point, uh, Butler fucks off. Zatai yeah. comes in the window. Is this before or after he deposits the third skull? So he must be back in the vicinity because he's he puts Kenny's skull. Oh yeah, so back in the yeah. Bottle. Because Doctor um, Doctor Zurich has basically been like, "Yo, take the skull back to them, and then once that's done, we can start with Jonathan." While you're Drake there, there, save yourself a trip. Get Jonathan Drake's <laughs> yeah. head while you're yeah, at exactly. It. So yeah, so that you're right. So he puts the skull in the. So obviously they've got a key puts the skull in the thing then comes in and then he does the same kind of like stiletto poison yes yeah, and then just as he's gonna and then he's gonna cut off the head and then the butler comes in again is it butler comes in again he's like oh no and dives out the window which yeah. looks a lot like a door at this point like he kind of just walks through the window <laughs> it's really yeah again, very weird um yeah. how it all happens and um, um, I have to say at this point, right, because everything has gone through the same kind of pathway of like stick pokery as with Kenny, I just assumed Big Johnny was dead. Like I just assumed, well, you got poked by the stick. Well, when Kenny given, was poked by the stick, he was dead. We're given some good reason because the next thing we see is everyone's around Johnny Drake. So we've got Allison and the doctor and the cop and the butler. And the doctor's examining him and says, oh, there's no sign of a pulse. He's done for. And it's like, well, so is he dead? So he's dead. So right. he's dead. Yeah. That, I mean, the, I no think pulse. it really, yeah, it just shows how much this, they need a new family physician. It's yeah, really he sucks. he's terrible. He sucks, so he's got no pulse. So again, I believed he was dead because the same thing that happened to Kenny happened to Johnny, so I thought he was dead. And then also his physician confirmed yeah. for me that he again, was dead because no like, pulse. Well, he's about 60, so I mean... The, the shock of seeing this weird guy come in the window must yeah, have Yeah, that's right. This is just shock. He's dead from shock. And it's like, nah, mate. You need to be like, there's such Better a at your job. Thing really suspicious, but you need to take how suspicious you are and just ramp it way the fuck up. Because there's some <laughs> weird stuff happening around you that you're just not sensitive to yeah. at all. Look, this dude is just clearly like ticking down the days till he's retiring. Like, yeah, he's, 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 he's caught out. Right. Right. He's, he's, he's caught out and he's like, you know what? Or, or maybe he just also really hates the Drakes. Maybe he just does not care. Maybe he's sick of their shite as well. Would you like me to save your life? If you like. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, fine. You died of shock. Whatever. Don't <laughs> even care. Do you want me, like, when you die, do you want me to properly, like, properly diagnose the cause of death? If you like. Then I fucking won't. Yeah, sure. Yeah. What caused the death of this headless corpse? <laughs> Heart failure? Yeah. <laughs> And, but you know, um, he got 60, had a good innings, right? So, <laughs> so thankfully, cop, cop. Yeah, he's just like, oh, hey, is that blood on the sheets? Is that blood? Again, clearly within the remit of the doctor to spot things like... To spot bleeding. that he'd been stabbed, yeah. There's blood on his neck and on the sheets. Yeah. So he takes the pillowcase and he's like, I'm going to get this shit analysed. Um, Which I also love. Everybody I knows. love, well, I love microscope looking for poison. Yeah, so he takes it to a yes. lab. He takes yeah. it to the lab and asks this scientist guy who keeps, who's the only person we see at the police station. So he's the only person he talks to at the police station. Like, clearly, I think for budgetary reasons, they didn't want to hire another actor to be a different policeman. It's just going to be this guy. And yeah, he's I think the guy we speak to at the police station. This was obviously not a big budget movie, and no. I bet it did not do well at the box office. No. So this guy analyzes this sample and he tells him, yeah, it's curare poison. poison. And he tells him this by looking down a microscope, right? And then, but then also, but the, and then the doctor, no, the, sorry, the cop was kind of like, you know, he's like, he's suspected it's poison anyway. And it's just like, well, yeah, like there was a puncture wound. A person appears to be dead. Like what else is the, like what else does that to a person? I don't know. But also if it's poison, it's molecules and you can't see those. Yeah, like, yeah, 100%. You can't look at a microscope and go, it's this kind of poison. No, you have so, to do like, you have to do yeah. like spectro spectroscopy to so, tell so, what the compound is. Sophie, this was actually a moment where I guffawed before Dave. This was where I was like, ah, science, science. 
Because you're not a microscope. Yeah, so you're right. So but anyway, so by looking at the blood on the linen through a microscope, we've been able to tell that it one, it's poison, and two, what kind of poison. So that's yes. very good for the story progression. It's impressive. It is very yeah, for the in terms of the story progressing quickly, yeah. it is very good. Uh, there's another instance of that later, which we'll get to. And, um, and then obviously because they now know what poison it is, they can, they can obviously cure this an person antidote. that I assumed was dead here. Yes. Yeah. So Jonathan's not dead. So No, so he excellent. says, it's Karari. He gets on the phone to the doctor and says, it's Karari poisoning, get some antidote and chuck it into it. Actually do your job. Yeah. Do your job. And the doctor and then, manages to do that effectively. I presume because Jonathan doesn't die because he speaks later on. In another yeah, yeah, yeah. Scene. I mean, presumably his pulse comes back. So yes. Yes. Um, and then he has more visions. So he has some visions of the skulls. skulls he does this. Yeah. But yeah. do you notice the skull? So when his first vision was of three skulls. Yeah. Second vision, four skulls, right? Because it's like the third, like that vision of the three skulls was kind of like, okay, my brother's the third one's about added. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So it's like vision of four. Uh oh, four skulls are coming. Who's the other Drake man left in the family? It's me. Yes. That's his skull, guys. That's yes. his skull. It's the fourth so, skull of Jonathan Drake. Yes. So is it at this point he gets taken to the hospital? He yeah, because he, he freaks out. He freaks out, and they go That's like, right. "We got to take you know." Because obviously he's like now had this like he's had this like hallucination again. There's another skull. He's wigging out. They're going like, "Okay, this man actually needs some medical attention," and yeah. the family physician is not cutting it. Let's take him to the actual hospital. Yeah. So he goes off to the hospital. Meanwhile, the cops like. Is there a, I'd like to see inside the vault, please. And then so um, that's when we discover third skull. Yes. So when does, so this is when I start to really lose it because this sure. is when like I was drippy, sleepy, drippy. Um, but there's a moment where the cop is chatting to the daughter in the mm -hmm. car. Is that before they get in the crypt? Because that was actually, for all I was asleep, practically, like I quite like their interaction. Um, and so she's, like chatting to him about how he wouldn't believe stuff. But then she takes him into the crypt anyway. Because like there's that weird story. Oh yeah, I think that's when it's like, be. oh yeah, your your father works at the university in the Department of Occult mm -hmm. Sciences. And like, I know this, I looked into these things. Because I mean, because the police thing. police yeah. officer was doing his job. He's trying. Unlike He's the trying. Yeah. Um, yes. So I think they had that chat and then she's like, yeah, well look, I'll take you into the, the, crypts, the crypt. I think. So we yeah, go into I the crypts. Right, yeah. Yeah, and then we open up the cupboards and she kind of very pointedly isn't looking into the cupboards because obviously she can't see what's going to happen next because there has to be a reveal. And he says, oh, you said there were two skulls in here. There are three and she turns dun, to her and three. And she's like, oh my goodness. And she's like, and you're the only one with a key? And she's like, yeah. And he's like, okay, well, calls up the police station, gets the same guy, the right. medical physician guy and says, can you get someone down here to, to dust for prints, please? And he's like, I can't. I'm the lab guy who looks yeah, at yeah. the microscope. You've called the wrong number. Yes. <laughs> no. So someone goes down. Is it him? Is it lab man that goes down there? Um, oh, I don't know. It must be. Because yeah, there's not think, another cast member. I'm sure it's the I same think, guy. Yeah, I don't think they've got I think more it is. I think so you're right. This is, this is when we get to the next bit of like, like you get the impression the script was maybe 20 pages longer and then they found a way to just ax it out, which is that they find, they dust the skulls and they find fingerprints on the skulls and the, the fingerprints on the skulls, confusingly, themselves have skulls, skulls in the middle of each of them. Pristine. So it's like they're dusting for fingerprints and you get these fingerprint marks and then there's, it looks like someone has taken a stamp, for example, yeah, and, just, and stamped a yeah. very dark because it's like do you know the way that fingerprint dusting like doesn't work you don't get different things highlighted a different amount like that like not yeah. that kind of level of like here is a very unless, dark, thing unless the skull stuff. bits unless the skull bits on his fingers are really really oily like super greasy super oily super, super greasy gross. skull yeah, no you're right but yeah so there's that so then it's like okay the person who put the skull back has these weird indentations on like well x What's the opposite of an indentation? Extentation. Uh, on those things. And then it's like, well, but like these skulls have appeared over like a long period of time. Yeah. That person would have to be hundreds of years old if they did all of these skulls. Like, I guess dust the other ones, but there's no point because like a person can't live for that long. But guys. But can they? But guys. Or can they? 
because Amber. there are those fingerprints on all of the skulls. Yeah. So you all in pristine condition. Yeah. So I kind of got the impression that this thing with the fingerprints, like the skulls on the fingerprints was written into the film to just save them some time and money. Cause it was like, so we've got fingerprints on the skulls. So that necessitates like a trip back to the lab and like looking at the fingerprints and realizing that they're all the same. And then like- What's a really obvious- back again. So it's same. like, we yeah. just need a way so that when they look at them, they know they're all from the same person. Instantly. And that's what they that came up the... with. And um, I like this bit that I just think I've completely missed all of this. Um, but around this bit, this is definitely where I was like losing consciousness, but- um, the daughter clears up the tiny skull mystery by showing Jeff, policeman, a book about the cult of headless men. That's right. And they literally open to a page that has like oh, the right. skull mm -hmm. fingerprints. It's like, hey, this is a thing. And yeah. then they give another explanation for why we keep seeing the creepy witch doctor with, and, and also the, the small heads with the um, stitching through the lips because apparently the mortals needed no food or oxygen. Yeah. Sorry, I just, I, this, again, yeah. this is Wikipedia. Yeah. So, no food or oxygen. Because so they had their lips sealed yeah. closed because. As we've established with mask wearers oxygen? these yeah. days in a pandemic, you don't actually breathe out of your nose. So if you wear your mask like that, you're still wearing it. Properly. Also, it's also, the same thing. Your mouth and your nose are continuous. So if you wanted to eat through your nose, then you, you absolutely could. No, Dave, they don't need any food and they don't need any oxygen. So no oxygen. Stop the mouth. There's no other way for oxygen no. to get in them. You okay. don't breathe through your nose. As I said, in New South Wales, a lot of mask wearers don't believe they breathe through their nose either. Like it's, it's just the way it works. It's just the mouth. I mean, it's look, arguably, Sophie look and it. I are more on the math side of science. And yeah. I know that you, you like to say you're on the biology side, but my understanding is my understanding is this is just a, it's like a cartilage feature on my face. It serves no purpose. Doesn't do it's just anything. aesthetically my nose piercing. It's okay. literally there to hold my nose piercing. Okay. Well, you I can sew it up. Just sew it up then. It's useless. I could. I mean, I mean we could. could. Hurt. But, but, but there's no need. Yeah, or experiment. Or experiment with eating through it. This has only had a shot and a half some, eating in it. Stick so a hot dog up your nose. See what happens. <laughs> I sew my nose together for science. Okay, now I've lost my shit. I need to like, like, like just go. All right. So, okay. So we've, um, yeah, so we've established that. Yeah. So it's in the, the reason is sewed up, no oxygen, whatever. And like, which doctor survives long time? Is that what we're yes. asking? Okay. Um, a long time. Immortals. Immortals. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, an <laughs> Very long time. amount of long time, Karen. <laughs> Look, here's the thing about maths and infinity. It's not that big. No. <laughs> it's, it's the biggest. <laughs> biggest it could possibly be. Um, yeah, so, okay, so that's happened. And then where are we? Oh, okay, so they've, so he's, do, is it at that stage where we realize that what's his face gets interrupted, he's gone back and he's talked to like Dr. Zurich. Zurich's like, go back and get the fucking head. And he goes back to get the fucking head, but like Jonathan Drake is not there because they took him to the hospital because he wigged out because he saw the yeah. skulls. Is that? Uh, there was a bit where he on purpose sends him back and is like, go get the head. Mm. And then he's like, not there. Oh, that's right. He's like, oh yeah, and they're both there. That's right, they're both there. I remember. They're both there. And then uh, Zutai comes back and he goes. Because he doesn't, they've sewed up his mouth so he can't speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, you may be immortal and not need food or oxygen, but you also definitely don't need to speak. It's deeply, ever. it's deeply inconvenient um, <laughs> to not be able to speak if you're immortal. <laughs> yeah, imagine that, that's like literally eternity of not being able to effectively Be communicate things. in a really sensible way. I guess yeah. you've got all the time in the world to make yeah. yourself understood. I also just so, think, sorry, I'm still stuck on this, not needing food and oxygen, so sewing your lips together. Because like, I mean, if you don't need them, just don't have them. You don't have to like sew your lips together. Just don't have them. Just don't have lips. Well, just, no, I mean, just don't have food. Yeah. Just a food or the. Oh, oil. you mean like literally just use self control and don't breathe or eat? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, you, like like you don't need but to. But you might still enjoy those things. They might be enjoyable indulgences. That's the thing. It's like, it's not about necessity. It's like, not, not everything in life is a necessity. No, don't need to punch it's, cans. Just like it. Right? It's just like, I don't need to drink a lot of gin on a Friday afternoon with my strange cactus ice cubes. I just really enjoy doing that with you yes. guys. Yeah. So it seems a bit extreme. 
So he goes to Zurich. So they're both there. Zatai and Zurich are both at Jay Drake's house. And they go to, he says, oh, he's not in there. And it's like, oh, well, we've got to bring him to us. Um, so at mm. that point, he goes to the front door and knocks and says, Yo, I'm just like, I just came to talk to Drake, give him my condolences, something, something, something. I can't remember. Yeah. The <laughs> or something. And then Jeeves is like, now nah, they took him to the hospital. Yeah. Um, and like, oh, point, well, so, let him know so, I called. Yeah. So, yeah, let him know I called or something. And then he fucks off and hides in the bushes, basically. Yeah, he just goes out. Yeah. There's a lot and of waits, for, waits for Allison to come by. Luckily, there's Allison ample gets, bushes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Allison gets dropped off in a cab in that same sweeping crane shot that we saw. We've seen four yeah. or five times by now. And um, she gets dropped off. Dr. Zurich just emerges from the bushes. Like, there's no car. There's no nothing. He just... I love it. Like, hey, it's me. Nothing wrong. Nothing and wrong. Like, nothing wrong, but your dad's taking a turn for the worse. And I'm hanging outside your house in the bushes to tell, waiting to tell you this. Um, oh, Alison, I missed you. <laughs> so why don't you jump, your cab's away, why don't you jump in my car and I'll take you to the hospital, which is a lie, because he's a liar. He's a liar. <laughs> he's, he's a phony. He's a phony. He's a phony. <laughs> um, and then at some point, J- Jeff, the cop, has a, a conversation. So it must be before this. We're getting really confused because this is where the film has just gone kind of. Yes, like, as you said, like really for a movie that goes for seventy minutes, it is it gets just too much. Yeah. There is too much. Yeah. So Jeff had previously had a sinister conversation with um, Zurich at his house and spotted a blood stain on the ground. That's yeah. right, and he said that it was yeah. No, because why did he? There is a re- like. There's a reason he goes to his house to talk to him. It's about to talk to him about tiny heads. Yeah, because he's, he's, like an he's an expert. Because he's a sinister okay. archaeologist. Right. So he's yeah. gone to talk in. He sees the blood spot. Because that that is a job, unlike the Department of the Occult, right? Yeah. So sinister archaeology. Yes. Is a department, yeah. but the cult. No, but it's true. Like we've seen in a lot of movies where people get involved in this thing, they find ancient relics, they find this stuff, and they just become evil. Like it's a thing. It's like a yeah, well-documented thing in the movie. As, as Indiana Jones tells us. Yeah, exactly. Often. So he he decides. Jeff decides to go back to Zurich's and look at the bloodstain a bit more closely. Because discovers... what does Zurich says that it's like? He says it's something dumb. Like, oh, he says it's red you. dye. He says it's yeah. red dye. Don't worry, it will come out. And as I told you, there were some like really glorious lines oh. that I like showing all of this to a bit. Like, don't you think it was supernatural? And it's like, but well, there was a death and that's a criminal thing or yeah. something. So it's like terrible paraphrasing. So but, yeah. something we skipped over as well is that the doctor, <laughs> Bradford, the shit doctor, goes yeah. to talk to Dr. Zurich. And because he's figured out that he's been poisoned with curare and Dr. Zurich is really sinister. And it's like, it doesn't matter that you've worked this out because you'll never leave this house. So yeah. he's clearly, like done something bad to Dr. Bradford, which is why the blood stain is there. Ah, I missed that bit yeah. completely. Okay. I, so, like, well, I didn't miss it, but I'd completely forgotten about its yeah. existence. So, well so while done. Zurich is off somewhere doing, doing kidnapping Allison, um, Dr. Uh, not Dr. Jeff, Lieutenant <laughs> Jeff Lieutenant is Jeff. exploring this underground cavern and finds the heads and he finds one that looks a lot yeah. like... He finds their little, yeah, their little like lab, their little witch doctor lab. Yeah, so he's worked it out at this point. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean. And then we, uh, yeah, okay, so we've, so we've now, where the fuck are we in this story? So we've, a, okay, so then we've kidnapped Allison. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then what happens? So what does Wikipedia say, Karen? I so watched Wikipedia. this yesterday. So Lee, who was Lee again? So Lee, Lee must be the science policeman. So apparently Lee discovered that Zurich was the Swiss agent on the 1873 expedition, but somehow oh, right. he, 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 he does. He looks into something and then it's just like, well, here's that thing about Dr. Zurich. He's, he's actually hundreds of years old. Yeah, it can't be him. The guy. Yeah, he, the guy with the Swiss name, you know. Um, Zurich kidnaps Alison, which we did get to that point. Yes. And he displays the now shrunken head of Bradford and said that Jonathan is next. Jonathan unexpectedly leaves hospital and arming himself goes to Zurich's lab. That's so right. big Johnny, yeah. big Johnny's getting involved again. Yes. He's like, look, he's like, I, I know low key what's happening. I got to step up. 
Because like yeah. I'm next, but like no one's going to do anything about this because I'm the guy who has been in my whatever department of the occult for 20 something years. And like, it's, it's my time. I've been training for this my whole life. Yes. So he then reveals that Zurich is a creature with a white head attached to a brown Javaro yeah. body. This so, bit is a I real know. problem. I know. So like, just when you think like, like brown face is one of the most offensive things that you can like do. There's brown face and brown hands, I believe, Dave. Yeah. Yes. And, yeah, and I think if it's like, how do you one up from there? And I think brown oh. body is probably the stage up. But it's brown oh. body. So what they've done is they've browned the body and then they've like drawn on like big twine so marks. Like, you know, yeah. in... Um, like in the Simpsons when Bart finds his evil twin and the twin makes like a pigeon rat. This is what happened in my yeah. head. And you see the big twine. I'm like, that's not how you surgically attach anything. That thing is going to bleed out. But it was that. So you've got these real fat twine so marks like Frankenstein, Frankenstein's yeah. monster. That is a better yeah. example. But like, yeah, like, but then so they've done that with makeup and then they've just brown painted the body. It presumably so it's gray. It's gray, but, but so there's a yeah, but there's a gray paint that you yeah. so you've got you white and you brown. And at that stage, I went, oh, I didn't remember this, and I regret everything. And I'm sorry, Karen and Dave. That is the first thing that went through my head. And I'm sorry for everybody that this yeah. movie exists. Yeah. Um. So the zero. So Johnny Drake and J Force goes to confront him and yeah. save Allison. No, um, apparently. So I didn't realize this bit either, even though I yeah. literally just no, so watched that, this. That's what we're getting to. Oh, I, oh, no. I, I don't even remember that. And yeah, because yeah, they're, 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 the they're, the they're in the underground witchcraft palace. Mm. And like they're there and then it goes in front and there's like the cop is there and Allison is there and like Johnny's there. But the cop arrives last because the cop he says something really last. weird. He gets to the house and oh. instead of calling for backup, because he knows he's going to confront someone who's dangerous, instead of calling for backup, he says... If I don't get in touch with you in an hour, send back up. Yeah, like that. Like, doesn't he say that to the butler? To Jeeves? No, no, I'm pretty sure he's on the phone to, to lab to, to, lab to, to the man oh, who's yeah. at the police station. The only other dude. Fucking hell. Yeah, so that's right. Because, yeah, they're all having their little thing. And so that's right. And then um, the witch doctor has, like, has like knocked uh, Johnny D to the ground and is going to fuck him up. And the cop comes in and, like, tries to shoot him. And, like, that then, like then his attention gets drawn towards the cop. The witch, so witch doctor runs at the cop and the cop like knocks him and he falls into like the fire potion yeah. that Dr. So, Zurich or, had previously made. Although remember. he is immortal, he is very flammable. Yeah, as and is he, described in Wikipedia, <laughs> Sophie, which you'll enjoy. Jeff bursts in and during a fight flings Zutai into an open flame. True. Zutai explodes. He like he he doesn't even explode. He just like wicked witch of the west explodes, just evaporates. Like yeah. he like in a it's like literally a puff of smoke is the way yeah. that they do it. So he puff of smoke disappears. So it turns out the way to kill an immortal person is to push them into the cauldron because it's like it's it's not just the fire. He hits like the cauldron fire. He hits the whole unit of cauldron fire. Cauldron and fire. So he's gone. Um, Allison screams. She's. Ve- I remember that she just like. It's like, oh, it's that thing where you cut and she's got the face and it turns and she screams. It's like, we get it, Alison. It's not what we thought would happen. We we're yeah. all very shocked. Yeah. Like, chill out. Um, so then <laughs> we've got a bit of chat between Jonathan Drake <laughs> and Zurich where he mm. says, so Zurich's like, you can't kill me and you know you can't kill me. And Jonathan's like, yeah, I know that. But what but- I can do what I can do is shoot myself because if I damage the head, mm, the skull, because it's the skull that keeps the soul in it. Mm. Yeah. If you, if you damage important. that, it's not yeah. intact. You're right. Yeah, and then it means the soul's fucked, so your curse is fucked. Yes, that's that's yeah. that was my understanding. So he's threatening to kill himself. Yeah, that's right. Um, and then I can't remember why. But for some reason, Zurich runs away. Yeah, for some reason he runs away. Does, it, does Wikipedia say why Zurich runs? Why he flees, Karen? No, that's not in it. Um, as I say, <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm very confused in all of this. And then he, um, yeah, because he, like, he fucking piss bolts, and they run after him, and it's like they get him on the ground, and they, so, and I think the cop like 
kills him but then jonathan's like no no no, he's not dead the only way that you can make him dead is if you sever like the white head from like the brown body, body. yeah i think that's literally Which at that stage head. i was like oh i've i really messed up this week i'm i just there's nothing okay about what i've suggested and past sophie yeah didn't remember so, then so, something so there was an inconsistent like obviously a lot of the science in the film is oh, oh gosh but <laughs> At, at this point, it's completely, it's, it's, it contradicts itself at this point because we missed a thing earlier where Zutai gets shot. Um, Zutai gets shot in the leg and uh, oh. Jeff, Jeff, Lieutenant Jeff recovers the bullet and sends it to his pal to analyze. And the guy's like, it's weird. It's like a third blood and the rest is Karari poison. Mm. And then they read in the book something about, oh yeah, they've developed this concoction that when they imbibe it, they become immortal. So it's kind of suggested that they the Karari poison is being used to make them immortal. Yeah, it's his immortal. It's part yeah. of it. But then yeah. they get Zutai's stiletto, which has Karari poison on it, and says, you need to jab Zurich with this to kill him. And it's like, well, if he's immortal and he's like mostly Karari, why is the Karari going to do anything? Yeah. So I didn't understand that. But nevertheless, Jeff like climbs up on a thing and jumps down on top of him and jabs him and he falls down. And they're like, cool, it's all finished. And they're like, no, no, as you say, Johnny we're D's like, no, not yet. You've got to sever for that to yeah. be like real dead. And then again, it's just, it's much too easy because he takes a bamboo blade and then just like kind of like the camera pans away and five seconds later, it's done. Well, it Whereas like, like, it, it pans it away and then it pans back and then you have like a headless body. So there's no, even, yeah. like, I don't know what he's done with the head in this time. So no. it's like, you, you pan away. John, Johnny D is doing something. You pan back to the thing he was doing and that was cutting off the head, but there's just like the body and no head. But, but like, we now know that they're being separated and then it disappears and turns into dust. I mean, this would take, I would say it would take the best part of at least 10 minutes for just so, yeah, an to, uns, a skilled person to remove <laughs> the head of someone with a piece of bamboo. Yeah, because it's like, I get that like, because even if you, let's not pretend that like a head needs to be connected to many things in the body. Let's just pretend yeah. there's a head and there's a body and it's just sewed with the twine. It would take longer than the amount of time it took for to, yes. with the event just to sever the twine. And Absolutely. we're not even talking about all the internal connections. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. It would take, it would, let's say 10 minutes minimum. For the twine. Uh, yeah. For, to, uh, yeah. To just undo the string. Because I thought, like, it was thick twine and there were a lot of strands and it was just like, a, and I get the bamboo is sharp. But like, it doesn't matter how, you can't just instantaneously do this. You'd have to do one by one. Like that's just, there's yeah. no going, there's no other way about this. But um, long story short, the heads, the body vanishes and the skull is left. Yeah. And Lieutenant Jeff says, the fourth skull. The end. Yeah. That's it. And it's fine because now there are four skulls. So we know that Jonathan Drake's fine. The curse has been lift, lifted. I did love the terrible, the ter and as I said, I like, I'm comparing this to like, the village of the damned which was made one year after and that body disappearing and then just like having ash there it was trash it was trash by village of the damned standards is all i'm saying it's like come on guys like we know that your era was better than this and um yeah so that was the movie and it was horribly offensive and um i apologize profusely but like, who knows what the rest of the movies on my list are going to be like when we rewatch them? Because I think they're mainly all old, except for like a yeah. couple of there's there's um, a Taylor Two Sisters and a couple of other ones, but they're all old movies. And um, the chances they're all highly offensive too. And uh, it's too late. So what was know. your what was your main takeaway from this one? Do you think? I just think maybe don't massacre a group of people because it will come back to haunt you. I think that's quite an important message that we could all uh, do with listening to and abiding by, you know? It is just a bit of a, it's a, a cautionary tale for any aspiring colonialists. Right? Just like there. maybe if you're going to go colonize, one, do you need to? And two, if you're going to do it, let's just not massacre everyone. Yeah. Although I think the problem in this film and the moral at the end of this film is it seems like the colonialists still won though, right? So yeah. Yeah, they did. Uh, they was, I mean, to be honest, but, but they were, some members of the colonial uh, establishment were punished in a bit of a way, but um, in the end they did come out. The but the fact still remains that brown people are scary. 
Like really, uh, it's, just, it's just like brown people are scary. And I'm sorry, are there any, you know, I know Karen, you found that excellent article, but where are the, where's the documentation of all the, I feel like we've missed, we've mixed a lot of cultures together in our yeah. white insensitivity here. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, as I was saying to you before, Sophia, um, there is someone that has done a review and I think he does um, a bunch of reviews of a lot of like B-movie things. It's called Million Monkey Theatre. And yeah, like I love that, that whole point of, although today's feature doesn't take place in the Amazon, it's a location that's crucial to the film's plot. Now, I know voodoo has very little to do with South America, but as we have seen before, voodoo need not be strictly portrayed as the hybridized religion of the African diaspora that it actually is. It can be whatever the overwhelmingly white magic makers of movie land want it to be. Yeah, and that's yeah. really that's really what it was, um, I think. So that was a, that was a takeaway as well. Um, um, I my takeaways as well um, were that fingerprints can have skulls in them. Um, which I enjoyed, and that Objection. actually the the science around fingerprinting can be really easy um, in some circumstances. You mean and also like in terms of of assessing blood for for poison. Um, again, I I was under the impression that you know I mean what I know I just do the mathsy side of things, but I was under the impression that lab science was um, quite challenging. But this film made me believe that it's I think it's just not. Look at it. I think, like, I think you know. I mean, science is like ninety eight percent observation, Karen. <laughs> I feel like the the like maybe the writer. Well, they can't have been a scientist because so much of it was like bunk. But they have a really high <laughs> like view of scientists because the scientist in the film can basically do magic. They can do any, yeah. That they're, they're on the magic is on par with the uh, with the the dark magic. But well. at the same time, they have a very low opinion of the medical profession because the the doctor portrayed as the most useless. Mm. Because a, he was a doctor. useless sack of shit, wasn't he? It was yeah, he was, that's um, probably hard to see. As, yeah, it happens all. It happens to every. There's no need to investigate because the past two of them have died of heart disease. So it's probably hard to see. Must be. It, it must be hereditary. Like it's yeah. not. It couldn't. That's why we. That's why we disturbed the potential crime scene. Um, yeah, and I. Th I think, as well as all of that, my other sort of takeaway for all of us, given we've all been in academia to some extent, is that we're in the wrong profession because clearly. Um, 50s, it was more lucrative to be an academic in the occult um, than, you know, what, what we've tried to do in That's, mathematics or neuroscience, right? Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think you're right, Karen. I feel like I don't own a fucking stately mansion <laughs> somewhere in like a... As upsetting as a lot of the things in the film are, I think I'm at least as upset that this man could be funded as an academic for 27 years in the field of occult science. It's like he could... 27 years of successful grant applications in the field of occult sciences. But look, maybe that actually is just a testament to like back in the day, we used to fund science better without question, whereas now everything is about <laughs> deliverables and it's actually the system has changed. So maybe this is actually just a snapshot into the past. Like this is what science maybe. used to be, you know? Oh, doctors used to suck. Doctors were terrible, but like science was this like, glory, you know, it's like just all the money, just throw the money at it. And then maybe people will stumble across something great. Maybe they won't, you know, like we don't know. Whereas nowadays, um, you know, maybe medical science is better than it used to be, but uh, we don't have the same respect for scientists. As we maybe, are. and maybe if they're, maybe if they're funded well enough and we let them study hard enough, they'll spot their colonial upcomings coming just in time to stop it from happening. That's yeah, my takeaway from the film. That's the takeaway. I think that's yeah. one of the, that's the summary of the movie. Uh, so, so thank you for for that, Sophie. Um, don't worry, there will be a bunch more. Hmm. Like, I don't, I don't think anything else I've suggested could possibly be that offensive, just based on theme. So, we're back to you, Dave. Yeah, Dave. Oh, really? Time. And you'll you'll notice. So, I, I yeah, told oh, Sophie, I've, nice I've, I've added so many films to this. I list. haven't actually looked, but, Karen, but I'm going to go look now, and I'm some not of them I added in Dave's list just so that my list didn't look so ridiculous, yeah. and I knew Dave wouldn't do it. So, um, that Dave, a little... you could pick something from your list if you want. Um, you put the mist on my list. Oh my god, Karen laughed. <laughs> oh, no. I know, I went wild. I went wild. It's ridiculous. I told you. Um, so Dave, pick something. Um, they pick something. All right, let me get rid of four skulls of Jonathan Drake here from the 
Oh, I don't know. So I got very excited when I saw The Mist then, which is a film I have seen before, but a film that I very much enjoy. This one has, um, you know, that I like started watching the, you know how they made a mini series for Netflix? Yeah. I watched the first two episodes with JP and then I think I came back to Sydney and I would say that neither of us have continued. It's just a fun fact related to The Mist. It's not really relevant like to anything. Have you, have you seen the film? Uh, again, this is one where I think I have a long time ago and okay. I have no recollection of what I did yesterday. So again, like, like happy to watch anything, even if I saw it yesterday. Too. Okay, let's do the mist just because it Because Steve loves it and he's very love, happy. I love it. Right, I'm just going to put these lines back there. Um, <gasps> me and JP watch Barbarian Sound Studio. Anyway, we'll get to it when we get to it. But uh, we watch that as a um, as a, a Christmas movie. Yeah, I put it on Dave's list because again, it was a me find, but thought Dave might enjoy that. <laughs> so... <laughs> Right, let me, I'm going to color okay, so, the color of we're watching. So we're watching The Mist for next week. Yes. Um, and I don't think it's quite as offensive as your one, but we'll see. Don't be like my one. I didn't make the full No, I know. I know. I'm sorry. So, so. Interesting link to this week's film. There is a, who's the, Frank Darabont, the director, wanted it to be a black and white film. And... Um, so on the on the Blu-ray release, there's actually a bonus feature where you can watch in black and white because that is how he originally intended it to be. I thought you meant sorry. I got really confused for a second. I was like, the four skulls of Jonathan Drake, and I was like, I think it was just because like that's the color movies were. No, I'm oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, that, about that you were yes. correct. No, I'm back. Yeah, okay, yeah. good. Sorry. Look, it's yeah. just you know we've been inside for a long time. This is what happens to the brain. It's true. All right. Thanks, team.